Yeah, so today I wanted to talk about the Hudson, which is the continuous integration server. But before I start going into the details of Hudson, I wanted to sort of step back a bit and uh, <coughs> explain to you what I think is the underlying economic push that's sort of forcing us into the CI. That is, <coughs> the, the price of the computing power is just getting cheaper and cheaper over time, <coughs> yet the price of the people are getting more and more expensive. So it stands to the reason that, or the, it sort of forces us, um, this economic reality forces us to use <coughs> more bucks for computers and less on people. And so that means each one of us needs to be able to use a bigger and bigger amount of computational resources efficiently, or else, well, we, you know, we just won't be competitive enough. So in the past, I think the five or 10 years, this has been mostly happening in your laptop and workstations. And I think the Java IDEs are a prime example of these things. You know, the, I don't know how many of you program in Java, but it made a lot of, the Java IDEs have made a lot of progress. Nowadays, the IDE would occupy a couple of gigabytes of memory in your laptop, and it does everything from the um, you know, code analysis to data flow analysis to auto-completion to document lookup and what have you. But you know, the single system performance, unfortunately, is somewhat saturating. And the IDE has more or less became good enough. Right? So for us to further utilize the amount of computational power that's available to us, so we have to be able to use a machine that we can't touch. Oh, yeah, the, because the other thing is that the, the human being could only spend, you know, pay attention to one computer at a time. So if you want to use more computers, by definition, those are the things that you can't see which we normally call as servers. So, so I think that's really what's driving us toward the, the notion of CI, that is to do things on the server. And because this underlying of economic trend is a real thing and it's not gonna change anytime soon, I think the importance of those automated fields and continuous integration in general is only going to increase. So I think the initially the, the idea of CI was somewhat simplistic that, you know, we, and I think to this day, this might be what the most people does, but it's basically is about running more builds and tests frequently on the machine that you can see in the, in the hope that it will make you a bit more productive. But I think it's really just sort of scratching the surface here. And then and as we start getting used to this idea of automating things, there are a lot more things that you can do on the server. And uh, so I'm kind of excited to be working in this space you know, that because there are just so much things that can be done and there's only so little time. So, uh, so the vehicle that I work on those programs, or, or part of those programs, I should say, is the Hudson, which is an open source continuous integration server that I've been working on for the uh, past several years. <coughs> so uh, one of the main emphasis on Hudson, uh, because there are many CI servers out there, uh, is the <coughs> Is on the uh, is the emphasis on the ease of installation and the ease of use. You know, so tools tools like this is all about making people more productive. And as a as a programmer myself, I sort of I really hate the tools that you know that that sucks. And there are lots of those. So the last thing I wanted <laughs> Hudson to be is one of those. You know, so I, I sort of did go, went extra miles to make sure that that it's 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 easy to get started and it's easy to use. <laughs> So one of the, the, so well, I guess I'll show you later in the demo, but you can start Hudson by just running Java dash jar or Hudson war <coughs> without having any sublet container of a sort. Uh, or you can, it also comes with the, <laughs> comes in an operating system specific packages. So if your operation guys aren't particularly comfortable with running Java apps, you can just give them RPM or Debian package and then, you know, off you go. And then once you start running Hudson, everything else you can configure from the browser. So beyond that, it's much easier. Another key, another key emphasis of Hudson is in the extensibility. I think, that again, the part of the real success in Java IDE is its extensibility. And so everyone installed a whole bunch of plugins that sort of customize your base IDE to what you want it to do. And, and the idea <coughs> Excuse me. The idea that I had was basically do the same on the web app that is Hudson. So I spent a lot of effort in this lower level infrastructure to enable the community at large to develop all kinds of interesting plugins. And today we have, I think, more than the 250 or 70 
community developed plugins done by people from all over the world. And that, that sort of is a key a part of the success of Hudson. And it's been adopted in, in so many places that uh, you know, this, this statistics number is, you have to take it with a grain of salt. But uh, last, about this time last year, we accounted the number of the long running installation that we think people are using it for real, not just for evaluations. And then we counted uh, something like 13K, and it was going up nicely. I guess the another thing I discovered is that the, you know, the software has been written in more places than, than, than I anticipated. There's like, a, let's say, uh, one of the users is the, this Union Pacific Railroad Company, and I had no idea that they were actually writing software, but they apparently do. So and clearly, the, this I mean, software like this is used in all kinds of technology companies. But beyond that, you know, those financial sectors, so the transportation, the hotel industries, and all kinds of things. So, so it's been it's been adopted uh, and quite well. So I don't know how much uh, people here are familiar with Hudson. So I I sort of I felt like I started with I should start with some of the basic feature introduction here. Uh, which is that the, so the, at some basic level, the, you know, even though there are a lot, lots of things you can do afterward, but at some basic level, the Hudson should be thought of as like a um, build tool on the server. So the first thing it does, it tends to, you, you tend to configure Hudson so that it not notices <coughs> changes that are happening in the repository one way or the other. And then when it notices that someone made a change, it checks out the source code from the repository and this is one place where the community contribution has really helped us because everyone has this crazy version control system that you have to integrate. Um, so we have nowadays, we have most of the major SCM implementations covered. <coughs> and then once you check out the source code, you do the build. And again, we have lots of, lots of different tools that people use for builds. You know, the different languages use different tools. Even in the same language, you have multiple sources of tools. So again, it, the community has written a lot of plugins to make this work. And then once you run the build, then you, tend, you typically then record the results of the build or the tests or the, any code analysis tool that you might have run. And then finally, it closes the feedback loop that if something goes wrong, by some definition of wrong, you can have the Hudson notify people because you know, one thing we haven't figured out is how to make machines fix the problems for you. So that has to be done by human beings. And so the best we could do is just sort of tell them in a way that's sensible. So, so that's the, the uh, basic stuff. And so I wanted to, let's see. So let me show you some of the, the basics here. So I've already downloaded the Hudson War here, which is about, um, I think now it is 27 or 8 megabyte. Um, and then you can just start. So if you are familiar with Java, you know that the war file is supposed to be deployed on the what we call as application servers. But if you're not familiar with Java, you could just start, you know, the Hudson like this Java dash jar Hudson war. And then this will start an um, instance on the browser here. Um, so this is the top page of Hudson. And let me make the font bigger. Even though it kind of breaks the uh, layout, I think it should be easier to see. So, um, so I'm going to create some random project um, here, and then uh, for this, so I have an, I have a very simplistic ant-based project. So let me build it here. So, um, so one of the benefits of doing things in the GUI is that you you get the automatic error checks on the fly. So, so let's say if I type in the, you know the file pass as opposed to URL, I get the error. Um, or again, um, I get all kinds of error detection. So uh, it, it sort of you know, it lets you fix the problem right away without waiting for things to actually break. So I'll go in, I think I'm going to build this with, um, so let me also put the dot here. That's my favorite. And I think it's test. Yeah, so I'm telling Hudson to check out from Subordon and then invoke Ant to perform a build. And then, well, for the time being, I'll just let it you know, manually start the build. Um, and then it sort of completes successfully. And then you get you know, the, the nice blue ball. Um, so to make it a bit more interesting, let me break the test here. So this is a workspace that I 
you know, that, that's connected to the same repository. So let's, for the time being, that let's pretend that I'm doing this from my, you know, the one of the developers is doing this um, in, oh, yeah, OK. Well, I guess I, I did have it. I guess I, I do have a broken test here, so that's good. 